here. Good boy. Right, sit. So in today's video, guys, we're going to be doing some straight memory work. So we're going to be working on getting a dog to hunt out a certain area, which I might do over some time. This works on two things. One, we can work on the hunt whistle a little bit. Two, I'm wanting to get the dog to run to a certain point, which I can then progress to sending the dog to the same point, but from lots of different angles. And what this is allowing us to build on is a memory retrieve, which is also leading towards a blind retrieve. And a blind retrieve is where you could be stood anywhere, tell the dog to get out, it runs in a tra straight line until it hits the retrieve or you stop it, rehandle it, tell it to hunt, whatever it may be. Um, and so this is something that we're just slowly starting to build on, isn't it, Billy? So we're using the same spot in the field, sending the dog from lots of different angles. We might also put a distraction retrieve in also, and then that will also work towards some more long-term handling and sending also. So we're gonna get out in the field and do a little bit of training. Anyway, let's go. Right, everyone, so the problem is with when we get further on in these dogs training, you're using bigger and bigger spaces to do retrieving or hunting. And from my point of view, that makes it then very hard to get good content because I'm often sending the dog from vast distances. The, distances. <laughs> the video quality gets poor, the microphone goes, it's really, really hard to do. But what I'm gonna try and do today Got this nice broken field, i.e. there's lots of nice structure and grass, nothing too hard. Got a nice bit of cover here. It's better looking in person than what it looks on the camera. But basically, I'm going to give Billy some retrieves into this area that he has to hunt out. And the first one, I'm probably just going to use a high-vis dummy. But I'm going to put a few different retrieves down. And I'm going to be practicing sending him from lots of different angles, but to the same space. So this is getting him used to going in a straight line. But using the same spot gives him confidence to build on. Now once I can send the dog from lots of different angles into the same space, I might then choose to have two spaces. So this space, maybe one over there, and I'll send one way, then I'll turn the other. When that goes well, I might have three spots. So I'll be in a central position sending one way, one way, and another way, okay? Today, I'm just gonna do some straight sends into this area. So you've got a mixture of memory, blind, um, hunting an area out, lots of different stuff going on here. So I'm gonna, I've got a few dummies. Now, like a lot of Spaniels, he likes these more natural ones that have got the rabbit, uh, the rabbit and the pheasant and partridge pelts around them over the high-vis one. So I'm putting a few of these out. Put that one a bit further. But the initial retrieve, I'm gonna use a high-vis dummy. And that's just to get the ball rolling. Right, so heel. So we're gonna do a straight send. Yeah, sit. Now I know my microphone's not too bad when I'm facing the camera. When I turn my back at any distance, that's when it stops working. I would say that we've probably got about 35 yards here. So not a long way, but with Spaniels, most of the time if you're shooting, your bird's not gonna land much further than that, unless you're clipping them a lot. <laughs> so um, we're just gonna be doing 30 to 40 yards at the moment. A lot. It's not about the distance, it's about the accuracy and the dog picking up on this routine. So I'm just gonna do a nice, clean straight send right with a hunt whistle he's not gonna have to hunt half of that oh he's picked the other one good lad good lad sit i thought he picked the white one first heel heel sit sit so what i'm gonna do put this one back out now okay i'm gonna do it from a different angle heel not much of a different angle heel Heel, heel, sit. Right. Now the problem with Spaniels is they can hit a bit of cover and they can start hunting. Sit. Dead. Gently, thank you, sit. So the problem you see a lot of Spaniels is you've got a bit of hard cover in front of you. You send them, they go 10 yards and they start hunting. That can be a real problem, especially if there's a lot of scent and it's real spanily ground. This is quite nice ground. It could be a lot harder, but there's still plenty of places here where he could naturally start hunting. Heel, sit. So 
So I'm going to put this one back out again. Now I'm going to do the complete opposite now. So I'm going to come across the other side heel. Remember, still sending to the same area. Sit. Right. So what makes this a little bit easy is that he's used to running to this spot. Now you might say, well, it's easy to send the dog to the same spot. It is, you're right, sit. But until you can send to the same spot from lots of different angles at lots of different distances, there's no point in making it any more complicated. So I'm going to sit him up, sit. I'm going to put this one back out again. What I'm trying to do at the moment is build up confidence into that area. Then once I've done that, there'll still be two or three retrieves there, which I'll send him for but he won't have a mark this time. So we're gonna go central again, Billy heel. Yeah, a little bit further this time. Right. Still the same area. Good boy. Good boy, here Billy, Billy, sit, good lad, sit, dead, gently, good boy, sit. Right, so I'm gonna give him one more scene and then the next three retrieves, heel, sit, sit. Ah, uh, he's not gonna have any visual, so those are going to be memories. They're not true blinds because he's seen lots of retrieves go to the area, but they're not a marked retrieve as such. So sit. So I'm going to do one more from over here a little bit. Hopefully I'll stay on camera. Um, and then I think there's three retrieves there after that. And we're going to try and pick all three of those, but without any type of seating. You could do this with gunshot like you saw me do in my last videos. You could do a shot every time you send the dog. That can help, obviously, if you've done the gunshot training first. Heel. Boy, sit. Dead, dead, dead. Heel. Right, so I think I've got three retrieves left now. I'm coming a little bit closer. Sit. I'm coming a bit closer. Um, just because now they're not scenes. I'm pretty sure he's going to do this pretty easy. But I'm just trying to show you sort of to build this. So we're using the same spot all the time. Lots of marks and memories. Build that dog's confidence. So I mean over a week or two. Just all scenes into the same area. Let him hunt it out, let him hunt it out, let her hunt it out. Lots of different angles, all scenes to start with. Once that dog associates going to that area, then you can start doing it where you haven't actually uh, thrown one and the dog hasn't seen, or you've put a few down. And now, like I'm doing now, there's retrieves there, but he's done already quite a few scenes that area, so you should have the confidence to run out. And when you look at your dog, when you've done this for a bit, you'll get to know whether the dog is gonna run out or not. They just give you this funny look. And actually, if you sort of jitter a bit, like move your arm and the dog moves, you know that they're going to go when you go to send them. So let's give this a go. Right. Nice, clear, verbal and physical. So all the time he's in the air, I'm blowing the hum whistle. Now, what's interesting, you might say, Chris, he's not picked the white one. Sit. Well, that's because all the time that there are these ones, ah, 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 all the time that these ones are down, you won't want to pick the white one. Um, it's not a problem. Good boy. Right, so we're going to try and do a slightly longer one now. Billy heel. But as you can tell, sit. As you can tell, constantly changing the position and the angle just helps that dog to learn in a straight line. So the next session, I might have one the other way as well. Okay, Billy heel. Billy, here. Right. Good lad, good boy. I'm glad he's picked that white one now because it means sit. Sit. So what I'm gonna do now, and you could do this, is give him an easy mark behind me or in another direction. You don't want it within about 
90 to 100 degrees of that retrieve because that makes it really, really difficult. So for example, if I bring him here, sit, sit, and I'm gonna throw a retrieve over there. I'm gonna let him have it. Then I'm gonna throw it again. Then I'm gonna turn around and pick one of these. So here we go. So this is what I call like a distraction retrieve. Good boy, good lad, good lad, good lad, sit. So now he knows that he can have this one thing. Ah, ah, ah. Now he knows he can have this one. This one's a bit tricky. So I'm gonna put it out the same space, turn to my left anti-clockwise. So it's like severing that retrieve off to then point him at this one here. So heel, sit, I'm gonna put this one back out. Leave that, always leave that heel, heel. So I see I've done a complete 180, sit. And now I'm gonna send here, right. Good lad, good lad. So, Billy, sit. Thank you, dead, dead. Heel, 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 sit. Right, so I'm gonna put this one back out again. I'm gonna to turn to my left. As long as I'm turning away from that, it's okay. Heel, heel. I always like to walk forwards a bit. Sit as well, sit. Hope you can hear me. Right. Gone out a bit left, that's okay though. Good boy. Ah, uh, uh, Billy, where are you going? Toilet, dead. Right, so we're gonna pick this last one here now. So you could build on that, by the way, you could just do lots and lots like that. But predominantly you have your main area to start with that you're always picking retrieves from. So I'm gonna do this last one a bit further. I think there's one there. Yeah, sit. Sometimes I'll do this and I'll think, oh, there's not a dummy there. And I'm starting to think he's hunting for nothing and there's no retrieve there. What I then do is I slowly walk up behind the back of the dog whilst the dog is still hunting. I chuck a retrieve down without the dog uh, seeing so that they then don't have a hunt without finding a retrieve. Right! I'm pretty sure there is one. There you go. I don't even remember putting it out. That's how good I am. Good boy, dead. Ah, ah, heel. Good boy. Sit. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. I've tried to put some different bits together. We will elaborate on that. Billy, we are gonna elaborate on that a little bit more. So this is basically building up memories into an area, a little bit of distraction work, um, teaching the dog to say, leave that. We're not picking that one, we're gonna pick this other one. But it all starts with one area that I'm always sending the dog to, and you wanna build on that over a few weeks before you test whether the dog understands running out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been informative for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Any questions, stick them down in the description below. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook. And we have a new stud page now, Win Hocklin Stud Spaniels, Spaniel Studs. I'll put it in the bottom here <laughs> in the description as well. So if you want to follow the new page, um, you can do. Anyway, happy training, guys. Come on in.